Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I've got a project for you, a nice, quick, easy one, almost just a clean and simple one, using Die Cutting Essentials issue 100. And um, we've got this beautiful set. So we've got a die set here, you've got papers and toppers that you can download as well, and we've got sentiment dies too, all included with the magazine. So I'm going to be using these dies to create a card. Like I say, a nice, quick and simple one. One that if, you know, if you're strapped for time, this is going to be absolutely ideal. There's some really beautiful projects throughout the magazine. There's some that are a little more in depth for you. So if you like to put more detail, uh, more time into a card, you've got loads of projects in here that you can follow. Many of them using the uh, items that are coming with the magazine. So you've already got the tools um, and the materials available to you. So let's just pop the magazine to the side just for now. Now, I'm going to be creating a card background. Usually, these sentiments would be cut from a nice bright colour or something that will stand out and put one or two of them on the front of a card as a sentiment. Now, rather than that, I thought I'm going to go clean and simple, so I'm going to use a nice white DL card base, but I am going to be um, creating a textured background using these, so I'm not actually going to be having a separate sentiment. So the way I'm doing that is I've already pre-die cut some of these. Now these are really good sized dies as you can see. We've got the word birthday, wishes and celebrate. Of course you can uh, mix and match those with other sentiments you may have. So it, it, all of these I've die cut, I just need to pop the little bits out. They've cut absolutely beautifully. So these were designed by lovely Chloe, Chloe Creative, sorry, Chloe's Creative Cards, um, who I'm sure you'll all already know. Um, so you can imagine, you've got beautiful detail, lovely elegant font within the sentiments. The butterfly die that we're going to be using is stunning. So I'm just going to pop all the little pieces out. And then what I'm going to do is I've taken the word, I've just used the word celebrate and the word birthday here. And I'm going to alternate those down the card. Now I've done them from the same colour cardstock as my card base, and it doesn't have to be white. If you prefer to go for something a craft cardstock, or even go for a nice dark colour, um, you can certainly do that. So I'm going to. I'll start with the word birthday, and I don't expect it to read anything. Just to have these sort of words in the background um, for what I want to say. So birthday, celebrate. And then birthday again, we'll go back to celebrate again. And I'm going to glue those down so we've got some nice texture. I might actually stagger them slightly, just like so, rather than have them all down the center. To kind of fill the space a little bit more. So I'm going to pop all the pieces out of these and I'm going to use a wet glue. So it's just going to be a fine tip applicator here to glue these down and then we'll come back and look at that butterfly. So I've actually decided to come back because I wanted to show you um, uh, something I've decided to change my mind on really is rather than using the wet glue because it's going to take a long time I've decided to actually spray the reverse of all of these with a permanent spray adhesive. So I use the repositionable one a lot when we're doing uh, template videos and this is the permanent version. So this one you spray and always make sure you've got something, a scrap piece of paper underneath because it does get very sticky and give it about 30 seconds or so and then you can pick these up and attach these to your project so if i just bring this over here as you can see i've got one now i have counted i've got seven here seven sentiments um so i've got two an extra of the birthday so i've got six of each or three of each and then birthday is extra so birthday will go at the top and at the bottom so i'm going to work out my spacing um by using these first of all so let's pick one of these up and birthdays are all going to be towards the left so I'm going to put this one down the bottom and I can trim off the bottom there if I need to so it will go birthday celebrate birthday celebrate birthday celebrate birthday so I need to work out which is going to be the center letter which will be this one center word which will go around here so just to get my spacing right I'm going to go with the two ends then the center that's my halfway point and then I can put the others in so I'm just going to gently lay that there and then gently lay a celebrate the other side and make sure that I'm happy with the spacing of each before I really press them down yeah I think so I think that will work there there we go and that's given me a bit of a guide for the spacing on the rest of them as well so hopefully you can see that and the reason I'm using the white on white is I just think it's a very elegant look I think it's really pretty you can put absolutely any color on top of this and it will really stand out nice and bright which is what we're going to do 
um, and yeah I just love white on white but as I say you can use any other color uh, tone on tone to create this sort of effect now when you press all that down let's just snip the end the bottom of the Y off the base of the card there I'm going to fold this and put this away so I don't stick anything to it by accident and then you've noticed you've actually got a lovely card base that looks like it's been embossed it looks like it's a really lovely deep emboss and if you want to punch or die cut some small hearts or stars or circles and scatter them around in the gaps you can do that too to really um, make that look even more dimensional and even more full but I really like it like that so now we've got this card base that's nice and textured but not too in your face now I'm going to go ahead and work with the butterfly so the butterfly is here it's a lovely big size and i really think this is going to be uh, a focal point i don't want to put anything on top of it or over it uh, i want it to stand out so i'm going to open up this packet as you can see uh, actually on the back you can see all all of those downloads you can download at home print off as many times as you want this particular paper is stunning absolutely beautiful definitely take a look i'm just going to cut this because my fingers aren't wanting to undo the sticky tab so just run some scissors along the bottom there instead, like so. And what I usually find is sometimes, oh no, that's nice and clear. Sometimes the sticky will catch onto the plastic. Now this plastic I always keep um, if you otherwise recycle it, but I keep it because it's perfect as a blending mat. It's perfect for storing little die cut pieces in. It's perfect for mixing inks and things on, which we'll be doing in a little while. So um, yeah, it's really, really handy to keep that. Don't throw that away. And then I'm just going to carefully release the die. Now there's a bit of sticky on here. So just try to release it. I don't like tearing the backing paper too much, but it's definitely, you want to pull away. You want to bend the card stock, not the die. If you bend the die, you could end up with a problem later on and actually damaging your die. So please do bend the paper or the card stock that the die is stuck to. Now, um, I usually, when I'm on my own, I do this out of habit. I sit there and I pick the sticky off. You don't always need to, it's not a necessity. It won't affect, um, or it won't usually affect the way your die works. So I'll leave that for now, I'll sit and do that in my own time. So there's our die. As you can see, the die is going to fit beautifully on the front of the card with a little bit of overlap. It's going to be really lovely. I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock, and as I say, I'm going to bring in this plastic and use this. And I've got two colors beautiful blues I love these distress oxides I've got uncharted mariner and I've got salty ocean so I'm going to start this piece of white cardstock is actually a little bit bigger than the dive I can put that down to get a rough guide I'm just going to start in the middle with the uncharted mariner nice deep solid color really nice and dark I want I want most of this uh, die cut to be really quite dark so a nice big blob there and then I'm going to blend that out into salty ocean so I've got much brighter colour so the two colours work beautifully together one has got more of a green base to it so the uncharted mariner is much uh, darker really but sort of a green teal tone to it which I love one of my favourite colours I'm going to just do the salted ocean, so sorry, salty ocean on the two sides, and then I'll bring back Uncharted Mariner and make sure we've got a lovely blend through from that one. So I very rarely apply ink to a card piece of cardstock and then don't come back to that colour brush at any time if I'm ink blending. I usually end up coming back. See, I've got my salted ocean on, that's kind of um limited the amount that we can see the uncharted barrenness and now we've got full coverage of ink we can go back in and we can really start blending out and getting a nice nice subtle blend between the two so just a little more ink on that brush and now I won't put any more on there we go so we go from light to dark to light again if there's any areas where you think you've not got enough ink by all means go back over those now let's just double check before we cut this or put our inks away that's going to fit on the ink space yeah perfectly okay so a couple of bits of tape bear in mind if your inks wet your tape might not stick very well so you might want to try and attach your tape to an area of uninked cardstock Pop that to 
the side. And let's bring our die cutting machine in and pop this down. Now, this is a very detailed die, as I say, so you may find you want to run this through a couple of times at different angles. I'm going through a really heavy cardstock here, so I'm going through a cardstock that's around about 280, maybe even getting towards 300 GSM. So I wouldn't expect it to cut on the first pass. It actually it's done really well, but what I'm going to do is very carefully, it's got that sticky on the back of the die, remember, so just put the poke it all under there. I am just going to run this through once more at another angle, just to be sure. Because I've inked the edges, or sorry, inked the paper, the edges as I pop out the die cut will be white. And if I have to accidentally tear any of those because they've not quite cut through perfectly, then it will ruin the clean look. So, so now I can start to see bits falling out. And of course, if you're clever, you'll pop all the little pieces out and actually save them. Maybe cut yourself a gold butterfly later and pop those paper pieces, those bits back in. You've also got this silhouette you can use. So you can ink through that and then put a die cut over the top. So lots you can be doing with the bits that you don't actually use when you've been die cutting. So always uh, remember to look at those, the bits we'd usually call the waste. But we are just interested in this gorgeous outline. So let's pop all the pieces out. We've got that lovely blend from the dark blue ink out to the lighter blue just on the tips of the wings and just gently pop these pieces out this is all the floral area lots of pretty detail but of course it's intricate so you do need to get your pokey tool in there depending on the on the weight of cardstock you used really and the texture of the cardstock I do find that a smooth cardstock doesn't cut die cut as well as a textured one um, I do understand the process why I'd, I get why that is to do with um, how tightly compacted the fibres in the paper are. I won't go into it today. I'm sure I've probably explained it lots of times before on videos. But yeah, so if you can get a cardstock that's got a little bit of tooth to it, a little bit of texture, usually that will then die cut a bit better than a super smooth one. There we go. So we've got this really beautiful butterfly. I will put it on the white card now, just so you can see, because on the blue mat it doesn't show up as much. That is just stunning, isn't it? So pretty. So let's just glue down the centre of the body here. I think I need to refill my glue applicator soon. And that's going to go around about a third of the way down in the centre of the card there. Just hold that down for just a few moments because I'm just doing the body I don't want that to lift up and what you'll find is because we've just got a beautiful white background we've got this lovely drop shadow going on just under here hopefully you can see that which gives that even more movement so that's a really really simple card I'm just going to finish it off and help the blue uh, sort of fade into the white a little bit by bringing back this piece of plastic so let's just spread that out and I'm going to apply a little bit of Uncharted Marina. It doesn't matter which, either of the two colours that you used um, when you were inking, inking the butterfly. And I'm just going to squeeze. I've got a water brush here, so this is filled with water. But if you've got a paintbrush with some um, water, just a jar of water, that will work equally as well. And I'm just going to mix up a little bit of this ink, water it down, pick it up and just start flicking it. And that's going to bring that butterfly in to the background, kind of make it look as if it's all part of and not just sitting on top. So you can go as heavy or as light as you want. And I tend to stick to two corners, so I'm sort of going this way and this way. Um, I'd like a big blob as well, so let's actually let the paintbrush touch there. And the same one up here here so let's there beautiful okay I'll clean that up in just a moment so I would let that sit and air dry as long as possible but there's a really pretty card that could be for any occasion because you can just use the word celebrate or wishes in the background if you wanted to uh, but this is of course for a birthday but it's very elegant clean and simple uh, I really love that. So that's all made using the items that came with Die Cutting Essentials issue 100. 
um, you can still grab yours it's at craft stash it's absolutely beautiful so i hope you've enjoyed this extra inspiration using the magazine please join me again on craft world and don't forget to share your makes over in the inspiration gallery <laughs>